So, you didn't follow the proper peel treatment protocol and ended up with PIH. Or, you had acne and now have PIH. Or, something else caused you to end up with the top reason that most ethnic skin patients end up in the dermatologist's office, PIH. What can you do to treat this at home now that you have it? Today, I'm going to tell you. First, what is PIH? PIH stands for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is when the skin ends up with a dark area or areas of pigmentation after some sort of wounding or irritation. The discoloration generally manifests right in the same area of the original inflammation. Common causes are things like insect bites, dermatosis, burns, cosmetic procedures such as chemical peels where the skin was not pretreated properly, acne, and so much more. What causes PIH? Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation results from the overproduction of melanin or an irregular dispersion of pigment after an inflammation has gone down. A pimple is the easiest way to show how this happens. The area swells and then darkens as the swelling goes down. That is PIH in action. Depending on where the pigment is in the layers of skin will determine its color. Shallow injuries in the epidermis will be in the brown range and they can take months to years to resolve if left untreated. Now, if the pigmentation is deeper in the dermis, it can have a blue-gray appearance and will most likely be permanent. Both layers of coloring will get worse with UV exposure. Who gets PIH? PIH can definitely happen in Caucasian skin, but it's much more prominent in the medium to darker ethnic skin types. It's been shown that melanin-rich skin shows a hyperreactivity to minor skin traumas resulting in PIH. A study in 2002 found that 65% of African Americans, 52% of Hispanics, and 47% of Asian patients developed PIH after common inflammations. Another study in Singapore showed that the darker the natural skin tone within each race, the higher the chances of PIH developing. For example, a darker skinned Indian will have a higher chance of getting PIH than a lighter skinned Indian. Same with Asian and black skin types. So it's not always just lightest versus darkest. There's light through dark in each race. Now here at Platinum, we talk on the phone to a large amount of the Indian and Asian communities dealing with PIH. So just because you don't have the darkest skin tone, don't think that puts you in the clear. It most certainly does not. We've noticed over the years that even those with very light skin, but who are of mixed heritage, get PIH quite often. A great amount of people who are looking to do chemical peels will fall into this ethnic skin category. That is why it is so important to properly pretreat your skin before applying any acid peel. The pretreatment will help reduce the rates of you getting post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation hugely. Now, the prep that we recommend for ethnic skin types prior to appeal is the exact same treatment that can be used to take care of PIH. So how should an ethnic skin type pretreat? We recommend that all ethnic skin types pretreat their skin with three products. Fade Bright Melanin Inhibitor, two times per day for a minimum of two weeks. Now the key ingredients in this are alpha arbutin, kojic acid, azelaic acid, licorice extract, mulberry, bearberry, resveratrol, niacinamide, and lactic acid, all of which help to turn down the melanin production in the skin. This helps to prevent PIH by not allowing the skin to build up melanin 
after it's wounded with the acid. It's continued immediately after the peel and then daily to control pigmentation and brighten the skin. Retinol Molecular Serum every evening on top of Fade Bright. Retinoids have anti-inflammatory properties and create biological effects in the skin that speed up cellular turnover and the lightening of the skin. They work hand in hand with melanin inhibitors. They love each other to get quicker balancing of the skin tone. Now the last product is a broad screen SPF of 30 minimum or up to 50 if you're already dealing with PIH or other pigmentation problems prior to your chemical peel. Now there's always some concern with SPFs and darker skin tones, so let's just address that right here. It is true, vitamin D is important to those with darker skin, but clinical studies have shown that sunscreen users' levels are still within the normal range. Now, if you are truly at risk for a vitamin D deficiency, you can always add a total dose of 1,000 international units of vitamin D through diet or supplementation instead. And if your choice is to forego the SPF, just know that you will not be able to adequately treat your PIH and it will continue to worsen year after year after year. You can go further with your treatments than just our peel prep though. So let's talk about other options to reduce or remove PIH. How to treat PIH. First and foremost, PIH is caused by inflammation or swelling. So the first thing we need to address is reducing the swelling. If you're dealing with a bite or a burn, such as a chemical peel, simple treatments such as a cold compress or aspirin or ibuprofen can help to reduce the swelling. The quicker, the better. Now, after a chemical peel, we always recommend to rinse the area well with nice cold water. This helps in reducing inflammation and calms the skin after that acid. Topical depigmenting agents such as hydroquinone, which is very popular, but only use this for short periods of time only, as long-term use can cause a purpling darkening of the skin, and it is possibly a carcinogen. They're still doing studies on that. Alpha arbutin, azelaic acid, kojic acid, licorice extract, niacinamide, ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, and retinoids can all be effective alone or especially in combination with each other to treat epidermal PIH. And remember, epidermal, that's in the outermost layers. These are to be applied daily and continuously. Now, you will find that every single ingredient except vitamin C and hydroquinone you can find in our Fade Bright, and that was not an accident. We created our formula with all of the most powerful agents to treat pigmentation that we could. Now, unfortunately, deeper pigmentation, right down in the dermis where it's getting that gray-blue color, that doesn't respond well to these agents, so you'll have to seek professional help with that. Chemical peels. In 2018, chemical peeling was the third most common non-surgical cosmetic procedure performed in the United States. And PIH was one of the most common indications for this procedure and skin of color. With darker skin types, we need to be cautious about what acids and percentages we apply. The best choices for treating PIH are the following. Salicylic acid. 15% or 25% one time every two weeks. Salicylic is an anti-inflammatory and it will aid in reducing the buildup of melanin over the course of three to eight peels average. Yesners or Jesners at two to four layers one time per month. This peel contains salicylic acid and lactic acid and resorcinol. 7% of resorcinol is hydroquinone, which is why this works so well. So expect to do three to eight peels as well here. TCA 13% at 
two to four layers. Again, one time per month is another excellent option. As long as you've pre-treated properly for at least two weeks prior to applying your acid. There are some minor peels that are options as well. Those are Mandelic and Azelaic 22, along with our Lactic 50%. These can be done one time every 10 days or so, and will need a complete series of eight for a good result. And you may need to redo another series. Quick tip. A good rule of thumb to see if you'll be more prone to getting PIH after a chemical peel is to take a good look at your body. Do you have dark marks on your legs from bites and scrapes? Dark marks on your knuckles, your knees, your elbows? Do you have spots on your face or neck or chest from old blemishes? If so, then you will want to pre-treat with Fade Bright, Retinol, Sunblock, at least four weeks or more before you apply a chemical peel. And here at Platinum, we feel it is always better to be safe than sorry. It is much easier to prevent PIH than it is to treat it. It's a lengthy process. Now you will most definitely find people out there who swear that you don't need to pre-treat your skin prior to a peel, even one such as like a deeper TCA peel, and maybe they escaped without any issues. But the odds are not in your favor. So always pre-treat and work up in strength slowly. Remember the studies I mentioned before? 50%, that means one out of every two people with ethnic skin that do a peel could get PIH. Please pre-treat, even if you haven't done so in the past. Do you still have more questions? You can see our video on TCA peels on dark skin, or you can always reach out to us. We're here to help you. Have a great day.